Chapter 26 All steerage passengers down these stairs, a voice barked. Dominic and Antonio were quick to follow the harsh command, while Francesco seemed to be in a daze. Together they found themselves in a crush of people, boxes, and baskets. A man with a thick mustache groaned as he heaved a heavy bundle onto his back that nearly knocked Antonio over. A baby wailed in Dominic's ear as an old woman leaned beside him, breathless under the burden of her parcels. Everyone pushed forward. At the bottom of the stairwell, men and boys to the right, women and girls to the left, families to the far end, came the second command. Maybe it's better that we're down here, a woman in front of them said. At least this way we won't feel the cold night air off the sea, and it will be drier. What does it matter where we have to say, the man beside her answered, as long as we get to America. Yes, finally, we're going to America, voices called out excitedly behind them. Going to America, Dominic repeated the words with a smile. He couldn't wait to show Francesco and Antonio his homeland. He couldn't wait to show them the streets he knew and let them taste the food he liked. He imagined them all sharing a double fries and a couple of burgers. He wanted to do everything with them, watch television, trade baseball cards, and play hockey on the street. Do they really have electric lights in all the all of the buildings? He heard a voice break into his daydream. Of course they do, someone answered. It is 1908, and it is America. 1908? Dominic whispered under his breath. It wasn't going to be his America that they were sailing to. It wouldn't be as he remembered at all. What would it be like? What was ahead of them? He wondered. What was ahead of them now was a stairwell, and as they made their way down into the dark, cavernous room, the crowd grew quiet. We're never going to fit in here, Dominic thought, as he looked back at the black framework that divided the hundreds of narrow bunks. Each section had three tiers rising from a bare wooden floor. Thin, straw-filled mattresses covered each bunk. There were no pillows. Some bunks had thin, dirty blankets, but many did not. A bucket serving as a chamber pot was placed near every tier. The boys found a set of bunks they could share with Francesco. Ant Antonio took the bottom bunk, and Dominic climbed up to the top. When Antonio complained that he was hungry, Francesco gave him a piece of bread that he saved from the night before. The other bunks had filled up by this time, and there was the loud echo of voices as people tried to make themselves com comfortable. Dominic laid his head back on the rim of the thin mattress and closed his eyes. As eager as he was to explore the ship, he couldn't help give in to the exhaustion he was feeling. But, mo but the moment he leaned back, his eyes popped open. Ugh, what stinks, he groaned. It's the straw in the mattress, a man in a bunk beside him answered. When it gets old and wet, it begins to rot. Try not to think about it. We'll be in America soon but soon stretched out for days, and the stink of the moldy mattress was replaced by far worse smells. Almost everyone had brought food with them, and what was not immediately eaten had begun to spoil. The heat of so many bodies cramped together in such tight quarters with no ventilation gave way to such an awful stench that by the third day the boys were forced to find relief on the open deck. Although the air was clean, with a fresh breeze blowing off the ocean, it was also cold and damp. After they inspected much of the deck as they could, climbing over the great coils of rope and ducking under long lengths of pipe, they looked up at the well-dressed passengers strolling on the first and second class decks. Once, as they were staring up, a woman threw down an orange to them. But unlike those first-class passengers dressed in fur coats and heavy wool sweaters, Dominic and the others only had the shirts on their backs to keep off the sea's clammy breath. So they soon discovered that they could keep warm if they pressed against the ship's giant smokestacks. Huddled together there with a half a dozen other boys, they traded stories about their dreams of living in America. They talked about how Francesco and Antonio would live in New Jersey, while Dominic lived in New York. They hoped that one day they would all live together. Francesco grew quiet whenever they mentioned animals, so Dominic tried not to talk about the pets he hoped they could one day have. 
he knew how much Francesca was missing Violetta. Dominic hated to think of having to leave them, but he was glad at least that he was returning to New York. He promised to save up his money and come, to, come and visit them every chance he got. But these conversations would come to a sudden end when the weather turned bad and they entered choppy waters. With little warning, the ship would suddenly lurch up into the air on the crest of a billowing wave and then come crashing down on the water's surface. Soaked from the spray and terrified of being tossed overboard into the heavy gales, they would all scramble back to the safety of their steerage dormitories. On one such day, after returning from the smokestacks, Dominic found himself covered in a filth of black grime. Unaccustomed to such filth, he suggested they clean up at the washrooms. There are only two rooms for this, Francesco said limply, hanging over his bunk. And look around you. There are hundreds of us. The lines are so long, why bother? We can wash when we get to America. But this is disgusting, cried Dominic. I can't stay this dirty until then. Besides, I thought you wanted to look good for America. I do, but for now I'm feeling too sick to think of dirt. Everything seems to be moving. Maybe the dirt will move off me as well. Well, I can't stay like this, Dominic announced, climbing down from his bunk. I'm going to try one of the washrooms. As he walked on the sticky, splintery floors, he thought about his old sneakers and how much he missed them. After waiting in line for what seemed like hours, he was finally able to move past the wooden partition of what was called the washroom. A bathroom! At last, Dominic muttered, stepping forward. Ugh! he gasped, covering his nose with his hand to keep from breathing in the horrible stench. The sight that met his eyes was unlike the worst washroom he'd ever been in. The bare wooden floor was sticky with waste, covered only by a thin layer of dirty sand that clung to his bare feet. There were no sinks, no towels, no toilets, and no toilet paper. There were only buckets, wooden buckets filled with salt water to wash in, sitting beside buckets filled to the brim with urine, waste, and vomit. If he hadn't felt sick before he entered the washroom, Dominic certainly did when he left it.